It's r slash Tales from Tech Support time. Nothing will make you want to quit your customer support job as much as a banshee screaming of an angry entitled customer. And how can fixing a problem make her even more angry? Get ready to experience the wrath of the entitled Karen in this episode of Voicey Hears Tales from Tech Support. This story was called, How Dare You Give Me Free Cancer? I have been working in IT customer service for some years now and have had my fair share of crazy and stupid people. This story is from a couple of years ago in 2014. I was working for my country's biggest ISP as a customer tech supporter. I was mainly helping people with wired internet, fiber optics and copper cable, as well as some home phones and TV. The company gives a free router to almost all our internet customers that even has a thunder warranty. Before the company had that deal, the customers got a simple modem. This will become important later. So I was there answering the phone to one lady late on a Friday night about 18.30. Hello, my name is Op. How can I help you? About time. Do you know how long I've been in queue? Why is the queue so long? Don't you have enough stuff or are you all just lazy? She was one of those. I did a mental sigh and mustered my regular nice service voice. Note, she had this very obnoxious tone in her voice and was very rude. I apologize about the queue time. There has been a major disturbance at the station, so a lot of people are calling in at the moment. But how may I... I was interrupted. I don't care about your excuses. My internet is incredibly slow and my phone has this annoying scraping sound in it. It has been this way since three months ago. Why haven't you done anything about it? I understand. I am sorry that you've experienced a slow internet connection for some time, but it's important to let us know about that sooner so we can help you. Let me just run a few analytics. The analysis showed a division in the cable, a problem that is commonly caused by units connected at home by the customer. I proceed to tell her, the analytics show me a problem that causes your experienced problem. I need to run a few tests to find exactly where the problem is. Heh, <laughs> well okay, I can wait but make it quick. I don't have all day. And staying in a call like this makes me feel sick. Me thinking, wait, sick? How nice of you to help. Together we can locate and fix the problem, I'm sure of it. I need you to pull out all of your units from the internet sockets so I can run the same analysis again to see if I get a different result. But before we do that, I need to borrow your mobile phone number so I can proceed the call from there. Reluctantly and ranting under her breath, she gave me her number and we proceeded to do the call over the MB. She pulled out all the stuff and the troubleshooting showed that her old modem was the cause of the problem. I explained to her that she needed a new one and that it's no longer in stock because at the time that modem was over 7 years old. What do you mean it's not in stock? I want a new one now! It means that the modem has expired from our stock. It is no longer available. But we have another free product that we can give to you in its stead. Mm-hmm. Fine. I shall hope you can send it to me so that I can have it by tomorrow. I'm afraid that sending this new product to you in such a short notice is impossible due to how the postal service operates. But it will come to the nearest postal service location within two to three workdays. Well, now she became, out of nowhere, really mad. She proceeded to loudly yell at me. No, you send it to me, to my mailbox by tomorrow, not to the postal service office. I don't care how you do it, and I expect not to be having to pay for anything. This is the least thing you can do for me, making me having to endure such a bad internet connection for three months, and having me call you and wait in a queue for 30 minutes. Then do your work so we can find the problem. You will make what's necessary so I can have it by tomorrow. At this point, I'm getting quite upset having this attitude shoved in my ear for about 20 minutes. And now she starts screaming at the person helping her. Me, really trying to sound nice. Miss, as I said, that is impossible. And we cannot know if your internet is behaving if we never get a notice from you. Who uses the internet? I can send... I get interrupted again. I said I don't care how you make it work, just make it work. That is impossible. I would send it to your mailbox so you could get it by tomorrow if I could. You live about 400 kilometers from our storage facility where the product is sent from and it's Friday, 19 something o'clock now. You can expect your package to the nearest postal service location next Tuesday or Wednesday. What? So I'll have to wait four to five days for it? This is the worst service ever. This company has such a bad customer service. The company actually has the country's best customer service and best wait time for issue resolvement. Me at the moment had enough of her banshee screeching. Yes, you will have to wait for the package to be delivered. Ugh. She went silent for about five seconds. I guess we will get nowhere with that. 
No, I am sorry that you will have to wait, but I assure you that the new product will solve your problem. The lady, somehow now calm? What exactly is this new product? Me quite confused by her complete 180. Uh, it's a router that the company gives away for free to all our internet customers as a free rental product. The lady again screaming, but now completely livid. What? You're sending me a router? How dare you? Don't you know how dangerous those things are? I am allergic to radio signals. Me quite stunned by the next 720 turn in the conversation again. Um, uh, well, if you're feeling uncomfortable with the Wi-Fi running, I can turn it off for you. The lady even more angry. How that by this point is even possible. You have control over my router? Well, technically it's not your router. You borrow it during the time you have the internet interrupted. Those things are dangerous and deadly. How can companies send out those things for free when you know how dangerous they are? Do you want people to get cancer? Lady, I assure you that our router meets the European standard Wi-Fi regulation. There was silence except for breathing. The Wi-Fi signal emitted by the interrupted. Wi-Fi is cancer and causes all manners of sickness. Young boy, I am educated and know a lot more than you about these things. I have been researching this. Me, now quite fed up by her BS and no longer gives one F. Oh, if you have knowledge about this, then you should know that the radio signal emitted by our router is at standard 2.4 GHz. And that radio signal is non-ionizing, meaning that the radio signal does not carry enough energy to excite the electrons in the molecules that build your DNA enough be flung away from the molecule and damaging your DNA structure to cause cellular damage. This signal cannot cause cancer. You lie! She did not try to correct me. And I want you to not send me that poison box! You will have to send me a modem instead! I'm afraid I can't do that. What I just offered you for free as a solution to your problem is what we hand out. If you do not want it, you can feel free to buy your own product from anywhere. Just note that if you do, the company has no support over the product you have bought outside our company as a solution not provided by the ISP to a problem that could have been fixed with the company products. So you are now forcing me to buy a product at another company to have my internet work? No one is forcing you. You could have our router for free and let me turn off the Wi-Fi. But you denied it and want a product that is no longer available. I will make you the headline of the newspaper. I will report you to the police for fraud and have you fired. You are giving away cancer for free. What is your name? I gave her my name at the start of the call, but I guess she forgot. I do not feel comfortable telling you my name, but you can call me Robert, far from my actual name. Do people at this company know who Robert is? No. <laughs> what? If you want us to send you the free product to solve your problem, feel free to call us again. No, I... Click. I think the call duration was about 45 minutes in total, and during the time she always complained about something. It was me, the company, the service, our methods of work, and our systems. After the call, I told my boss what happened, and she was supportive and told me that I should have hung up sooner than I did, and was proud of me for trying to help that nasty customer. She told me that she overheard some of it, and that I did good. It's a pretty weird accusation to say you're giving away cancer for free. I mean, beside the obvious absurdity of it all. It's almost like her complaint is that she's getting the cancer for free. Like she expects that she's supposed to be paying for it. This story was called, Our Whole Network Is Down. But at least my phone is charged. This happened a couple of weeks back. I work for a medium-sized company that has multiple plants across the country. My boss and I are based in the same location and are the only two system admins or tech support guys for the whole company. So we're having a pretty cruisy day and week so far. Only had a user account and mobile phone to set up for a new user when suddenly we have a call come from one of our plant managers. Hi, it's me speaking. How can I help you? Our whole plant is down. Wi-Fi, network cable connections, printers, even the mixer. It's not working and there are five trucks in line to be loaded up. Okay, sounds like there is a network issue. Are you able to send someone down to check out the comms cabinet? Yep, I'll get plant worker to go check it out. About 30 seconds pass. According to PW, it's all lit up and running. We do some more investigation on our end, speak to the ISP, and they confirm there is no network outages on their end. So we book an urgent last minute flight 
and unfortunately for me, I am missing out on my two weekly coffee meet and dinner with some friends. So, a little peeved. Four hours later, I arrive at the plant, and I am escorted by PW, mentioned earlier, to the comms cabinet, which, as it turns out, is a little cutout under the stairs, where the wall has just been bashed away and network equipment stuffed in there. Straight away, I can see that there is no power running to it, so I turn around to the worker that showed me there. You said that it was completely lit up and running. Uh, yeah, was when I had a look earlier, before my shift, but it didn't look like it is now. Okay, but I thought you told me it was lit up after the network went down. Oh, I thought it'd still be okay. Didn't really want to go downstairs again because it's kind of warm. Well, it's not running now. Let me have a dig around. So I dig around the spaghetti cabling of network cables, power cables, and general bullcrap in there that has been piling up for about five or six years to find out that all of the power cables went to a power board, which was a cable run through the wall into the locker room to a power point with a label on it that said, do not freaking remove, do not freaking turn it off. It will shut down the whole freaking plant. Little harsh, but I guess the old technician really wanted to drive in the point not to unplug it. Lo and behold, it is unplugged with a phone charger plugged in its place. I am completely dumbfounded and just stared at it for what felt like a good five minutes. I've flown across the country, missed out on my coffee meet because someone just wanted to charge their phone and didn't bother to read the label. PW walks in and asks, Everything alright? And then grabs the phone and unplugs it. Oh sweet, phone's charged! I just stutter over my words until I manage to get out. You unplugged the power cable that specifically said, do not freaking remove, do not freaking turn it off, or it will shut down the whole freaking plant to charge your phone? Did it not occur to you that this is the reason the plant hasn't been able to work for the past five hours? PW just shrugs and says, No, not really, I guess. Thought it was just some of the lads having a laugh. And you know what locker rooms are like. <laughs> well, I am just left speechless. I plug it back in, walk up the stairs, and make sure that everything reconnects back to the network, then drive to my hotel and expense a crap ton of cider to my work because frick, I wasted an evening I was looking forward to for someone charging their phone. Since then, we have had a PowerPoint put into the comms room and upper management has told all plant workers that they are not allowed to charge their phones at work anymore and must get a manager to check the comms room if we have network outages in future. These are the stories that you don't really hear about at a workplace and they have some stupid rule like you can't charge your phone at work and you're like, whoa, that's a, such a stupid rule. Why would you be able to charge your phone at work? And you're like, wow, which idiot in management must have come up with this stupid rule? Until you hear the story and you're like, okay, I kind of get it. You kind of have a point. This story was called, Sometimes Everything Happens at Once. To give a little context, I'm not working in any kind of commercial tech support, but I have been part of my school's tech support back in the days. We've been a group of half a dozen students, and we were responsible for cleaning and maintaining overhead projectors as well as handing out notebooks and video projectors to teachers. Having computers in each classroom has not been common in our school at this time. One day, my geography teacher needs a notebook and video projector for her class. She usually uses old wall maps and is not tech savvy at all. She told me there would be students to help her out if she runs into trouble. So I only reminded her that the battery will only last half an hour, so she has to plug it into a socket. After that, I went to my English class. There's me, my geography teacher, and presenting student in her class. Geography teacher opens the door without knocking and pointing at me. You, I need you to come with me right now. I thought you were reliable and capable of giving me working equipment, but none of it is working anymore. You will come with me to fix it. My English teacher was really confused, but managed to calm her down after a few moments of more swearing. She was a little ambivalent, but decided to let me go to help her. Okay, so have a look and find out what's wrong. Will do. What happened? Presenting student was just about to start her presentation, and everything went black. It has worked fine at the presentation before. It shut down. Why didn't you connect the notebook's power supply to a socket? There is no free socket anymore. There is only one in here and the video projector is connected to it. 
There is a second one under the cover down here. You usually connect your overhead projector to it. Oh, I didn't know you can use it for other devices too. I thought those projectors are the only thing you can connect there. I rebooted the notebook and was about to leave because I thought my job was done. But I was wrong. Hey, stop. The video projector isn't working. I guess you broke something. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but let me have a look. Maybe the video output is disabled after the restart. You know you're supposed to fix it, not to break anything. Get on with it. I know. The video output is turned on. I'll check the cable next. Um, why did you connect the video cable to the projector's output instead of its input? Well, as GT left to get you after the screen went black, I tried to fix it myself, but obviously I couldn't. You know, the video input is where the video signal gets into the projector, so it has already been connected properly before. Just out of curiosity, what made you think that this would help? It said video out, so I thought this is what to do if the video... Well, goes out? I thought she was joking and wanted to chuckle, but tried not to, just in case she wasn't. For the second time I wanted to head out, but no, not yet. I can't open my presentation. I double clicked it, but it won't open PowerPoint. Okay, try it again and we'll have a look at the error message. Wait, stop. That's your file? Yes, it is. That's not your file, it's a link to your file. According to its properties, you saved it on the desktop of your computer at home. Okay, then fix it. You don't understand. That's only a link to your file on that flash drive. I'm sorry, but I cannot fix it. There must be a way to fix it. Please help me. I need a good grade for this or... She starts whispering. I will fail this class. Did you save it somewhere else? If it'll be graded, you have to upload it to the online learning platform. Did you already do this? I did. Can I download it from there? Yes, you can. I did not try to leave this time. I knew better and decided to wait now until she starts her presentation. Instead, I chatted with my geography teacher. She didn't seem angry anymore and was back to her usual smile. Dang it, I can't download it. It won't connect to the internet. The reboot might have disabled the connection to the wireless network. Before I had a chance to check, my teacher ran over to her closet and pulled out an ethernet cable and proudly held it up. Network? I have a cable for that. They gave me one last week. You don't have a socket for that. They will install you one during the summer break and give you your own computer. She burst into laughter and the student could finally start her presentation after connecting to the wireless network. And I could finally leave. A few days later, my teacher came to me and apologized for her behavior and told me that all her students passed that class. Tech support people are sometimes literally like heroes. Technology can be such a foreign thing to some people, and especially teachers at a school. And yet it's so important for the actual functioning of the class or workplace. So to be able to solve tech problems is kind of like a superpower. It's just such a shame that they're usually treated so badly when they're the ones literally in control of the solution to their problem. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.